so much for being here. Um, this is a conversation that has been, that we've been kind of percolating for a number of years <laughs> as we've been talking about sure. Raphael's work and how it evolved and what, um, what she's dealing with in both the materiality and the aesthetics of her work, the philosophy of her work. So thank you all for being here, and um, I'm happy to introduce Raphael to anyone who hasn't met her before. <laughs> um, Raphael is a painter that we've always admired during the 32 years that we've had our gallery in Santa Fe, and we've been lucky enough to represent her work now for about a decade, I would say. Mm, not quite, but yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> <I didn't notice. laughs> yeah. And we're very excited um, about the possibilities of that our new space will offer mm -hmm. Raphael in the decades to come. Her work is so expansive, and um, we can't wait to see what she can accomplish when she has 40 foot by 20 foot walls. <laughs> so um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. and. Um, and we'll start in with the first slide here. We wanted to present an, a sort of a framework to help people understand where Raphael came from and how her paintings evolved. Raphael grew mm. up in, in Belgium, in Brussels, seeing yeah. the mm. Northern European painters, particularly devotional paintings. And can you say a little bit about, um, about what you absorbed from these early paintings that you saw? And, and let me say yeah. one before you get started. Yeah, yeah. Let me say the name of this exhibition is The Possibility of Remembrance. And when we were exploring that, um, that idea and how that idea manifests itself in this exhibition, we realize that there's a whole lifetime of, of memory embodied in these paintings. There are artifacts of, visual artifacts of everything that, that Raphael has ever taken in in her lifetime. And so we wanted to start at the beginning, which is her childhood growing up in, mm -hmm. in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, you know, growing up in, in Belgium, you're exposed almost automatically to a lot of art and certainly all the Flemish master. And I think as a child, it, it really did captivate me um, very, at a very young age. And there's that combination of the devotional work and the, the finesse and the light in those paintings and the, and the intimacy of it all as mm -hmm. well, okay? So, there, so I, for me, that's pretty much my first impressions and my first memories were that at that child level of right. entering a whole new world okay which gives the key to your imagination to just you know expand and enter um but what what connected this you know very early impressions to all the way to you know, light and space or land art or whatnot, is that devotional aspect. Mm -hmm. And that to me, it has been sort of the core of, of what I do. Yeah. 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 A lot of people, we had some, um, some collectors this week who came into the gallery, they said four times mm -hmm. to see your show because there was more that they could take in mm -hmm. and something different every time they, they came take in. Time. Yeah, they do the take time. The work does take time. Which yes. And, and I feel like that is something that you're, that sense of reverence where you're standing in front of a painting and you want, you just want to experience it somatically. Mm -hmm. That right. is something I think that, that people really respond to in your work. And I love the fact that you've used gold Mm -hmm. in this painting. Um, I really, I feel such a sort of lineage from this Van der Weyden painting to your painting here, where I had to look at it probably 20 times mm -hmm. before I realized that there was gold. What was there? You know, almost like an icon-like feeling 
sense of gold mm -hmm. um, emanating from this work. And the, the lines in this work also remind me of the movement in the Van der Weyden work. Um, I also wanted you to speak a little bit as you were moving through the European masters mm -hmm. early on, going toward, um, you know, sort of through the impressionist, modernist paintings that you were seeing in Europe, what, what, well, what kind of kinship did you feel? There? Um, okay, I think you mentioned the sense of time, you know, mm -hmm. which I, and especially when you live in a place like New Mexico, um, there is that real precious, I would say in today's age, precious sense of time slowing down. And I want the painting to actually hold that mm -hmm. moment, to literally hold time. They take, you know, they develop slowly and they unfold slowly. Mm -hmm. And and you pointed out at the beginning how this body of work uh, is sort of distilling a lifetime of developing what would you say consciousness or you know it's like a practice you yeah. know every day you get up you go to the studio you fine tune your your craft your your mind your body your, your you know so everything i have known and everything i have seen and it's a lot of it you so you know you you it's at the back of your mind somewhere mm -hmm. but there's like a instinctive uh, memory of things. It is like a knowledge that I think is present in our DNA or in our cellular memory, and I, it percolates through the work. Yeah, I I kind of feel like over the last fifteen years, yeah. twenty years, yeah. as I've looked at your work, I've seen certain um, certain elemental tendencies. Mm in the work. Some of the work, like the all white paintings that mm -hmm. you did, um, mm -hmm. felt like air mm -hmm. to me. Sure. They were so, um, so expansive. Uh -huh. And then there was the body of work that you did called Dust Stories mm -hmm. that had both the palette and the sort of granular feeling of the earth in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Then you did a... So a you worked with the elements. Yeah. In some ways. yeah, and then the liquid sky paintings, yes. yeah. also that felt that reminded me of of that um, that longing for being able to distill um, sort of a, a spirituality or an an airiness of our sky you here know, in I, Mexico. A friend of mine had told me once that our skies here are mm -hmm. our ocean. Mm -hmm. And this is a great expression because there is something very mesmerizing about just the space here, mm -hmm. and and you know and that became my my subject and my material, the space and the light, and and how do you work with that? How do you combine that alchemy, you know, mm -hmm. with the material that I work with, and and just the dancing light, you mm -hmm. know? So um, at the end of the day, everything else sort of fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. You know, all the references to, oh, you know, coming from, <laughs> coming from Europe, you have all those art theory references, the mm -hmm. Deleuze and all of that. It takes a long time to peel it away. Mm -hmm. And you finally, <laughs> finally arrive at your, your inner core. Mm -hmm. And there's something about intuition and grace that needs a certain type of knowledge. Mm -hmm. that becomes instinctive and and then it's just the hands you know so so talk a little bit about what what compelled you to leave <laughs> europe and and go to los angeles ah well first they were surfing uh no sorry <laughs> <laughs> uh to be honest with you i was very young and it was a very um impulsive decision uh, I grew up in a more structured environment, in a large family, very school, you know, good family, very scholarly, very accomplished in many ways. And I never thought I would actually leave and stay, mm -hmm. okay? But when you also, like I said, I was young, okay? You, you grew up with that much history and that much art surrounding you. 
you either have to have an ego like a cathedral mm -hmm. to actually push forward or for someone like me i instinctively knew i needed that distance mm -hmm. in order to find mm -hmm. my own voice and my own place and that takes a while that takes a while um and then you know circumstances uh, brought me to New Mexico and that it became that connection to a land that gives you the, the, the mental and physical space to, to distill everything that I have experienced and that I had known and how to push it forward, you know, to combine that sort of, ah, how should I say this? You know, if you think about it, like the second half of, this, of the 20th century, right? It was a lot about us versus them and rejection and erasure of prior um, movement. And I think culturally, my train of thought has always been like, we need to reconnect with a yeah. certain center that seems to be lacking. And just the title, you know, the yeah. remembrance is a possibility of remembering the great thoughts of um humankind yeah or experiences yeah. yeah yeah so when you left europe you went to los angeles correct yes to otis yes and why did you choose los angeles instead of new york those were your two um, choices it was that that was a very clear choice uh because new york felt too sim not similar but to mm, you know there's a hierarchy there's more containment there's you know it's a little more like like European cities, um, LA was a blank state, slate, mm -hmm. and I love that. You know, mm -hmm. it was not pretty. It was not, you know, but I I love that. There was a real raw energy, and everything was possible. And it was the '80s, and mm -hmm. you know, it was a good time. It was a good time, and and a very creative time, without the sort of mm, social structure that a more condensed city like New York would have. So. And, and what happened for you aesthetically during that time? How did your work, did your work change? Well, I, my work wasn't existing before that, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, you know, I was still a student. I mean, I, I think that my mature body of work developed later on and probably here, mm -hmm. okay? When you sort of weave together everything that, I had absorbed, you know, growing up with the the whole, shall we say, the whole light and space and that sort of California energy, which mm -hmm. which was great. Not not the bad boy of you know right. early mocha, Chimnol, yeah. etc. That was a whole different thing, and 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 a lot of Los Angeles took took that uh, turn. Um, it wasn't for me, but I mean, all of that you know you're exposed to and. And you know, I was. It was a time of looking and learning and fearlessness, working mm. things through in the studio while doing. You know, get the green card, na na na. You know, mm. and you All were those an illustrator. Are things you were a well. realistic illustrator, and I was actually time. successful illustrator, which is mm. fine. It just gave me discipline, um, very realistic kind of work, uh, make a living. All those, you know, evil necessities. Mm -hmm. um, for, for about a decade, you know, for about a decade, yeah, while I was developing my own stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I know that you've mentioned in the past, during your time in Los Angeles, you were really interested in the light and space artists mm. and how they, that, that ex the experience of that work was more experiential, exactly. right? Exactly, same thing. And less yeah. about painting. And so um, it's interesting to me that in the lineage, in the art historical lineage of your work, the materials were so important yeah. In yeah. The, with the Northern yeah. European painters in particular. So while you didn't, you didn't um, carry on the, that sort of lineage compositionally with figurative work, mm -hmm. you certainly embrace the importance of materials and traditional mm -hmm. materials like hand ground pigment and wax um, and the sort of same alchemical relationship with materials yeah. 
that the early European artists. Well, had. the choice of wax was about mm, twenty years ago, um, and that came from a place where, uh, again, you know, it's a very much of an intuitive path. I was looking for a way to reconnect as a painter, um, and working with. I mean, wax has this very old, real physicality and it smells and it's all those evocative memories with it and uh you work you know from liquid to solid so it's, you know it's a very seductive uh thing and it wasn't uh the traditional material okay mm -hmm. so i sort of lost onto that uh, a little bit by accident and that was it i mean i just ran mm -hmm. with it um and there was really nothing at the time I mean, I would go to apiaries, you know, to, to collect my materials and collect some pigments on travels and et cetera. So it was a combination of various things. And what happened with this body of work and the last few years is um, pushing that a little further. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, I have my base with those very physical material um, that became really part of, of, of my practice, but then then reconnect with more painterly, assert, well, assertive in a certain way decision, when you reconnect with the hand, mm -hmm. which is not something I had done. You know, mm -hmm. I had rejected that for a long time. You know, mm -hmm. I wasn't allowing myself to go there, so to speak. Yeah, so, you're, yeah. One of the, um, you're one of the rare painters that has, especially one of the rare abstract painters, mm. that has really been able to ground the ideas that you're that you're grappling with in your work um, into a two-dimensional mm. picture plane. Um, so for me, I really see this mer this convergence mm -hmm. of very traditional materials. With the idea, with very contemporary ideas, mm -hmm. and and to me, that's something that makes your work, um, that gives you your unique voice mm -hmm. as a European painter who evolved into a contemporary abstract painter here in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'll talk about a little bit about. I've got a couple of slides here of yeah. artists yeah. who painted in New Mexico, and. Um, and tell me a little bit about about how the ideas of light and um, more spiritual concerns, a connection with the earth and the sky and the water, you know, the I elements. Think it percolates through here, mm -hmm. you know, and and it wasn't necessarily a choice for me to to come here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was perhaps a happy accident in some ways. Yeah. But uh, there's some, the land here really does get under your skin mm -hmm. at some point. And I think especially these last few years, the, the sense of, um, of element, you know, I want them, like especially, for example, a piece like Shakti, I wanted it to have that sense of always having been there. In other words, the wind sort of shifted through it and, and, and you know, almost organically created that, that object, so to speak. Um, so there's, there's definitely more of a um, body, body sensation to it and movement mm -hmm. and wind and water and air. And yeah, I mean, it's, a, it, it's more connected in some ways to distilling a certain type of... Um, Even an experience. Uh, yeah, yeah. And when I say landscape, it's really more the landscape of the mind or the mm -hmm. history of landscape painting mm. or the rather than, than, than the real yeah. thing. Like you were so. telling me about being a scuba diver. Right. And the feeling in one of these paintings yeah. of being inside the water. Right. Talk a little bit about that. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have those, those, those physical memories, absolutely. And there's something very... Um, amniotic about it, okay, which mm -hmm. connects also with, well, the semiotic and all that, but that's a whole different discussion. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when you, li you know, living here, I think there's a deep connection to water and as a concept, as an element, 
that and the lack of it and the sense that this was once a sea mm -hmm. and because time here as a way of moving as archaeological pace so to speak or very you know mm -hmm. um the the sensation of uh, and i have many memories indeed i've spent a lot of time underwater uh of of being transported and moved around and follow this almost like if you think of the way a school of fish functions mm -hmm. you know that sense of being just part drifting. of something drifting part yeah. of it you just sort of surrender to to something else um so uh that does percolate especially in this particular painting here it it, it you know not that it's necessarily uh, any time of descriptive or anything like that, but it has that sort of physical evocation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a memory of yeah, that. Yeah, 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 in some ways, you know, yeah. So. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Raphael. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, all of you.